wanna see you. I don't wanna hear you tonight. I don't wanna fight you. You don't wanna know if I feel right. I don't wanna just forgive you. I just wanna be fine. I'll be waiting for a sign to light up. Yeah. And your heart is out of sight. I just wanna feel mine. Good afternoon, everyone, and you're all very welcome to the AIMS National AGM for 2022, coming to you virtually on Zoom and on YouTube. And it's great to have so many of you joining us online today. Myself, National Secretary Frank Foley, and AIMS Vice President Fergus Kavanagh are coming to you live from the Spa Hotel here in Lucan. And we'd like to say a big thanks to the staff and management of the Lucan Spa for all their help with the AGM today. I would like to say also a big thank you to Ames Edward Weekend Administrator Fiona Sheeran and Ames PRO Kate Furlong and our uh, Registrar Maureen Heffernan who are working here behind the scenes today. And a massive thank you to Vinnie Osborne who is directing and running the show here today and for all his continued help, advice and efforts on Ames' behalf to make our events run smoothly. Just a couple of housekeeping rules. We have you all on mute. But if they, anyone on Zoom would like to ask a question, we would ask you to use the raised hand option and we, we will come to you. Or if you're watching on Facebook, send a message and Kate will see your message there and we'll bring you in again as well. So just to start the meeting, I'm just going to propose a, a minute silence as we remember all our society members, families and friends who passed away in the last year. And we remember all who have been affected by the coronavirus. And may they all rest in peace. Thank you very much. Now, the, the National AGM normally takes place annually at the end of our working weekend, which again this year wasn't able to take place, and sadly we were online again. We didn't have our working weekend, but we had a full day of meetings online yesterday, and we hope to return to our normal schedule soon. But now we're going to proceed with the business of the meeting and start with item number one on the agenda, which is the apologies. So I'll hand over to Frank. Good afternoon, everyone. I don't know whether many of you were watching the BBC musicals last night. This reminds me a little of the Back to the Future uh, musical, and I don't know which character I'm playing. But just to note, apologies for the meeting, and we'll get on with proceedings. And you're all very welcome online and in person. So we have uh, apologies that were noted with our National Registrar, Maureen Heffernan, 
and I have a few others here as well, Angela and Garrett and St Agnes's, members of Avon Moore, Musical Society who are in rehearsal, Olive Melville, Ulster Operatic, Philip Alfred, Kilcock, Derek Shadow, New Ross, Jackie Fisher, Bray, Mags McGee, Nina, Nolene Kelly, Pope Marnock, Francis Leahy, Balna Slow, Catherine Walsh, Wexford. And if there's any others, uh, maybe you could um, email or text either Maureen or myself at register, uh, registrar at aims.ie or secretary at aims.ie. Very easy to remember. Okay, the second item on the agenda is the minutes of the 2021 AGM. And they also were... Uh, Proceedings were virtual from the Little House on the Prairie in the National Secretary's home in Inchicore, and attendance as per list with the National Registrar. There was a total of 92 members online. Warm welcome to the first Zoom AGM from our National President, Rob Donnelly, Avon Moore Musical Society, uh, National Secretary Frank Foley, Kilmainham Inchicore Musical Society, stated that the quorum was present and the meeting commen commenced. A minute's silence was proposed for all those that died uh, within our societies during the year. The minutes of the previous National AGM held in the Connacht Hotel Galway on January 2020 were proposed and seconded by Jamie Collins and Jerry Sweeney. The National Secretary's report was read by yours truly and proposed and seconded by Fiona Sheeran and Brian O'Neill. Treasurer's report was presented by Moira Nolan, a National Treasurer. Accounts still had to be audited as difficulties due to COVID getting accounts to auditor. A loss of €8,371 Euro on accounts. Discussion around the charitable status of the organisation and the benefits of it extra costs of audit uh, for charitable status uh, could be uh, near to three and a half thousand euro. Discussion around streaming uh, after workshop run by theatrical rights worldwide. Discussion around costs that involved for societies and that an American streaming company are involved in the shows Book Ticks Live and then payment to be made also to the rights company TRW even though the society had paid rights already. And the question was asked, how can unemployed professionals around the country in areas of sound and lighting get work at home? Congratulations to all councillors for their hard work in keeping things together uh, during the COVID uh, crisis, was expressed by Mary Mullen, a life member. Wor worries were expressed uh, around the future of the organisation if the COVID crisis continued uh, uh, from a financial perspective. The Treasurer's report was proposed by Colin Moles, a former National President, and seconded by Brian O'Neill. Motion to the AGM that due to the current crisis that the National President be allowed to continue for a third term due to the obstacles involved during his term of office was proposed by Caricature Musical Society and seconded by Nina Choral Society. And there was a second motion that the makeup and numbers of national councillors be left as is due to the drop in membership of member societies and the need to keep continuity in the number of volunteers at national level. Uh, these mo that, that motion was proposed by Seamus Power, Carrick and Shore, and seconded by Jamie Collins, Wexford Light Opera Society. And both of those uh, motions were unanimously accepted by the meeting. President's Address. National President Rob Donnelly thanked everyone for their attendance and noted what a strange year it was as he was ready in his little red Peugeot, I did mention <laughs> Back to the Future, but with nowhere to go. He thanked all our societies for their support. He wished all societies and their members every support from the organisation. The President thanked outgoing National Councillor and former National President Mary Heaney for her service to the organisation as she stands down as National Councillor for the Western Region. The National President emphasised the importance of diversity and inclusion within our societies and in light of controversies over casting around shows like Hairspray, Parade etc. Rob mentioned that we will continue to highlight these issues at national council level and we will try to appoint a diversity officer. 
He was delighted that the Council had decided to forge ahead with the Unsung Hero Award, the Mary Kelly Award. It was also important that we were going to go ahead with a virtual concert instead of the Choral Festival. The National President finished by thanking all National Councillors and Officers for their help and support during the year. He thanked all members of his own society in Avonmore Musical Society and his family for their support and encouragement. The election of officers, National President Rob Donnelly was re-elected by numerous societies and list with National Secretary. National Secretary Frank Foley, National Treasurer Moira Nolan, National Vice President Fergal Kavanagh and National uh, PRO Kate Furlong all re-elected to their various positions and list of nominees with the National Secretary. National AGM 2022, it was decided to go ahead with Northern Region if the COVID crisis had abated. And this was proposed by Kate Furlong, National PRO, Cool Mine Musical Society, and seconded by Seamus Power, Carrick and Shore Musical Society. Election of Auditors. McFeely and McKiernan, current auditors, were proposed by National Treasurer Moira Nolan and seconded by Brian O'Neill, Kells Musical Society. AOB. Well done on the new uh, Look website, Mo McMahon from O'Connell's. Mikey Finn, Kilmainham and Shakur Musical Society, raised the issue of inclusion and cultural differences around shows that are adjudicated and all of those paid for and followed instructions by rights holders. Surely it was up to the rights holders, he said, to police copyright infringements around casting. Andrew Walsh, Ross Gray, congratulated GR8 events uh, and Colin Moles for all their hard work on behalf of societies. Keno Dowd, Odd Theatre Company, congratulated the National Com Committee on steering us through a difficult year and all the various services that were offered. Adam Trundle, Newbridge Musical Society, raised the issue of the uh, reserve and could those monies not be used for societies during COVID and under, and under pressure uh, some even at the verge of fold folding because of financial pressure. Fergal Kavanagh outlined uh, Nine Arch Music Society, outlined discussions with Arts Council, and not sure how money is going to be actually spent. Mary Heaney Castle Ray explained problems with losing money for librettos with TRW. Jackie Fisher Bray Music Society queried an issue around insurance. Seamus Power, Caricature outlined the Strand Theatre Caricature's Walking Challenge fundraiser. Newcastle Glees outlined what they were doing for Fitness February and supporting the uh, Ainsley Hall in Newcastle and County Town. And that being the end of business, the National President uh, finished the meeting. So if we could get a proposer, if all is in order, a proposer and seconder for those minutes, please. Proposed. Seconded. Okay, moving swiftly along then, we have the next item, number three on our agenda, is a report of the National Council for the year ended 30th of September 2021. The 2021 AGM was held remotely due to COVID-19 restrictions hosted by the Eastern Region. The AGM re-elected National President Rob Donnelly, South East Region, as President for the new season, and Fergal Kavanagh, Western Region, was re-elected as Vice President. A motion was passed by the meeting to extend the tenure of the President and Vice President by another year due to the effect of COVID-19 on the acti activities of the organisation. A motion was also passed to keep the numbers of regional councillors as is for a further season. It was decided also to reduce membership to 50 euros for the coming season. Uh, Rob Donnelly, National President, thanked all those present with a record attendance for an AGM for their support during these difficult times. We will see better times and full houses again, he said. Robert thanks, thanked the National Executive and Council for all their hard work and efforts on the part of the organisation uh, for their member societies. 
He thanked the members of his own society, Avon Moore, for all their support, and without this, he would not have been able to carry out the role. The 2022 AGM will be held in the Northern Region following a vote of delegates subject to COVID restrictions. Now, the list of uh, councillors for 2020-2021 is as per list, and I, I won't go through them, um, uh, in the Secretary's report, which was emailed to Secretaries and Reps. The Secretaries, the Executive, sorry, consisting of the officers and chairperson of any region not represented by the officers, met every month and continued to take on the day-to-day -day running of the association and members of the National Council meeting every second month look to the future and vision of the organisation. Society membership, as per the end of September. Eastern Region, 29 members. Midlands, 8. Northern, 16. Southeastern, 10. Southwestern, 19 and Western uh, 16, and that was a total of 98 and one junior group or junior society. COVID-19 and its implications. Again, we had the impact of COVID-19 on the island and all voluntary organisations, not only those involved in the arts being closed down and theatres remaining dark and closed. It did look a bit like the end game for societies across the island. But as always, there's no people like show people. They smile when they were low. With that usual resilience and showmanship, societies found resourceful ways to keep the lights on and companies together during the lockdown. From bake-offs to virtual dance workshops, and of course, the timeless game of virtual bingo, which I'm told dates back to Italy in 1530, and there's a new musical definitely there somewhere. The adjudication and awards scheme. We had the appointment of two new adjudicators for the adjudication scheme. Alan Hazlitt, with a wealth of experience as an actor, director and adjudicator, a member of the Irish Association of Drama Adjudicators and the Guild of Drama Adjudicators in the UK, taking over Gilbert, and Susanna O'Leary, owner and artistic director of the Wexford School of Ballet, and performing arts, King over in Sullivan. To date, they have adjudicated following government guidelines three shows in Gilbert and six shows in Sullivan, up to the end of 2021. We also had the appointment of two new programme adjudicators feed for each of the tiers, Gilbert and Sullivan, and they are respectively John Graydon and Brian Cunning. Sincere thanks to the two adjudication liaison officers, Laura Ryan from Thurlis, uh, looking after Gilbert, and Maureen Kyohan from John Patrick, looking after Sullivan, for all their hard work and patience during a very difficult year. We wave a sad adieu to our northern wonder, Maureen Kyohan, and sincere thanks to her from all societies and National Council for her kindness, her courtesy, and of course, good counsel in her position as liaison officer for Sullivan. A warm welcome to Clodagh Farrell from Bravo Theatre Group and Western Region in that new role. Aims virtually together. The awards weekend in Killarney again fell foul to COVID-19 with the cancelling of the week weekend, also rescheduled for September. Weekend Administrator Fiona Sheeran with her subcommittee came to National Council with the idea of AIMS virtually together as a showcase of the talent within musical societies. This gave an impetus to societies to get outdoors and sing. On the night, we had 30 societies taking part and we had 3,800 views within the two days of it being live online. Sincere thanks to Vinnie Osborne again for his professional help and expertise in getting the stream and the production off the ground, and to Fergal Darcy for acting as MC for the proceedings. What a great e evening of entertainment it was, and warmest congratulations to all the societies and members that took part. You did your society and your local community proud. Congratulations to Catherine Keane from Fermoy Musical Society, who was winner of the Mary Kelly Unsung Hero Award, and thanks to all those other heroes 
up and down the country who were nominated by their local societies. Choral Festival. A very successful choral concert was held in St Michael's Theatre in New Ross, a night of the musicals on the 22nd of May, which was streamed live to great success under the musical baton and direction of the talented Kevin Kennedy and with financial support from Wexford County Council, this was a free concert and a great night's entertainment. There were 750 views of the live stream and seven societies from the region took part. Sincere thanks to the Choral Festival Subcommittee and the indomitable administrator Lizzie Heffernan for their hard work with this. During the week preceding the concert, excerpts from various competitions from down through the years were broadcast on Facebook and other social media channels. Sponsorship and grant funding. Again, during this season, we found ourselves without a main sponsor. However, we had success in getting a small grant from the Department of Education and Science in getting funding for music education. Some of this grant was used towards an inclusion and a diversity workshop held under the good auspices of the Southeastern Theatre Group and with the help of David Hayes and David Hennessy at the end of October. Further workshops around this team are to be held around the regions. As mentioned in last year's Secretary's report, meetings had been held with the Arts Council regarding access to some government funding for the organisation and its various activities. This came to fruition with a lot of hard work and graft by members of the National Executive, National Vice President Fergal Kavanagh and yours truly, National Secretary Frank Foley, and a grant coming through uh, for mentoring of societies within the adjudication scheme and the extension of our much-loved youth summer school held every summer in the Ursuline College, Thurlis. More details regarding this scheme from the Arts Council in the next few months. Various regions received grant funding from their local city and county councils for their various activities. National President Rob Donnelly represented at Ames at a virtual meeting of the Joint Committee on Tourism, Culture, Arts, Sports and Media on the 30th of June 2021, highlighting the effects of COVID-19 on musical societies and what can be done to help them and other arts organisations in the same position. The National Executive, represented by National Secretary Frank Foley, is in contact with the Office of the Minister of Arts on, the, on an ongoing basis. The National Council would encourage all local societies in their region to get involved with their local PPN, Public Participation Network, with their local authorities and local councils to get up-to-date de details on various funding and grant opportunities available to musical societies. Bursaries. The National Council decided to go ahead with the Ames Bursary this year and sincere thanks to the O'Neill family for continuing with their family bursary in honour of the late Anne. The auditions for these bursaries were again held virtually and thanks to the interview panel Derek O'Neill, Laura Ryan representing Ames and Shane Farrell, Bravo Theatre Group with National President Rob Donnelly for their help and expertise with this. Thanks to Brian O'Neill for his help and organisation on the day. Winner of the Anne O'Neill bursary was Emma Thornton, nominated by Trim Musical Society. And the winner of the Ames bursary was Ashton Murphy, involved with Londonderry Musical Society. And due to the standard of talent, a second Ames bursary was awarded to Avine Malone, Ennis and University College Cork Musical Society. Best of luck to them in their future studies and their future careers. Also sincere thanks to Deirdre Masterson and the American College for the provision of a bursary for their musical theatre course and congratulations to Jordan Bass, the third recipient of this prestigious bursary. Website and social media. Mark McNeil of Southwestern Region continued as website administrator and was instrumental in the work behind our new website, www.aims.ie, which was launched during the year. Site sessions, 7,563, up 544% on previous year. Visitors, 3,877, also up 558%. 
We would encourage member societies to update their own information on the site and use the site to highlight your upcoming shows. Uh, AIM's presence on Facebook and Twitter have increased through advertising of our members' shows and events. Thanks to Kate Furlong, National PRO, for her Trojan work on this and spreading, as Kate says, positive musical vibes. Child protection and vetting. This continues to be a valuable service to all societies and AIMS are still organising guard vetting procedures for societies at a very small charge. Numbers using the service this season was of course affected by COVID but include 13 applications processed from four societies. Sincere thanks to Fergal Kavanagh, National Vice President, Western Region, for all his hard work on this. Showtimes. Showtimes continues to hold its own in financial terms, but it still continues to lack contributions from our member societies, becoming even more difficult through the lack of shows and reviews and various activities within societies. And the number of copies in circulation and print is decreasing, but the ele electronic copies continue to grow. Sincere thanks to editor Brandon Cogley for his hard work on Showtimes. Many thanks to those who give technical support to Showtimes. A great credit is due to Richard Lavery for his help on this. Also thanks to Mary Smith who looks after the circulation and also ensures that those who advertise pay up. This source of advertising continues to shrink, but hopefully with increased uh, electronic circulation, new avenues of advertising will be tapped in the next season. Former National President Seamus Power, Carrick and Shore, was appointed as Commercial Manager and thanks to his work on sourcing advertising during these barren times financially. COVID-19 has had an effect on articles and events, so the Council had decided to decrease the number of editions during the last season. Hopefully this will return to normal as more shows come on stream. Insurance scheme. The numbers changing... Uh, to our very competitive insurance scheme had increased before the onslaught of COVID-19. At this stage, many societies have paused all their activities and will reactivate insurance when needed during the coming year. We have changed our brokers and group policy to Brady Insurance or Event Insure, and you will need your AIMS registration number available from National Registrar Maureen Heffernan and the contact is Mary Burns, and the number is there, and mary at eventinsure.ie, and the policy underwriters are Alliance. We expressed our deepest sympathies to all those who have lost a loved one in the course of the year, and all our societies who have lost a valuable member. May they all rest in peace. And that's the National Secretary's report. Okay, thanks very much for that, Frank. The, the next item on our agenda is the financial... Sorry, Rob. Oh, sorry. If we could just get oh, a proposal and a seconder yeah. uh, for that. Yeah. I propose Mikey Flynn, Kilmaine and Okay, And who was the proposer? Mikey. Yeah, okay. Callum Moe is here from Avonmore, second. Sorry. sorry, Rob, sorry for interrupting no. you. No, apologies, Frank. Yeah, so item number four on our agenda now is the financial statement for the year and the 30th of September 2021. So we can hand over, we should be able to share the screen now and we'll hand over to our, our treasurer, Myra Nolan. Is the report going to go up on, on the screen? Well, I just read it from what I have in front of me. I think everybody got the copy of it by email. Yeah. Hello. Right. Okay. Um, can everybody hear me? Yeah. I'm, I'm up in. I'm up in the attic with all the props surrounding me. Um, so. So actually, it, the the report is is very is very short because uh, we, there were very few activities obviously during the year. The bottom line was we had a loss of five hundred and fifty euro. Um,
membership fee. We had some miscellaneous income, which was for 750 from Marsh Insurance, which we were promised about three, four years ago, eventually came in. And there were some mail shots um, that people can pay to, set, to advertise, like professional companies. Um, we had a small amount of interest, 27 euro, which the, the Bank of Ireland, they, they were doing some audits and found that some of the accounts hadn't been given the correct interest. So, so it was that. I mean, it's not an awful lot, but we'll take anything we can get. Um, on the administration, the administration was down from the previous year um, because there was no travelling around. Normally, uh, our president would have been travelling around the country to various societies. Uh, in a normal year, the um, administration would be about €27,000. So you can see when we get back into full capacity again, all of these expenses will increase. On the activities, there was nothing for the adjudication and awards. The Choral Festival with that lovely concert that they streamed gave us a profit of 1,158. And I'd like to really congratulate them. It was a great night's entertainment. Um, the awards weekend, there was nothing. Showtimes had um, a, a small profit. Um, the, this was mainly due to the printing costs being down because of the re reduction in the actual um, editions throughout the year and the, and the distribution of, of it as well. The Youth Summer School, there was nothing. And on the website, there was just a small loss of €61. Euro. And on the regions, um, obviously, they haven't been doing anything at all, really. Um, but we had some income from advertising and we gave some to all of the regions. So the bottom line then is 550 of a loss. Anybody got any comments? Thanks, Moira, for that. Uh, is, does anyone have any questions for Moira? If you like to raise your hand. Or are we okay? No, all, all, all good. Okay, thanks, Mark. Can we have a, a, we a proposal for the, a proposal and a second? I, I the, propose. I propose. Yeah, I second it, uh, Joe Sweeney. Okay. And Mo Wasp. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's great. Thanks. Right. Thanks, Mara. So the, the next item on the agenda is the uh, president's address to the members. So that's that's me. So uh, yeah, uh, good afternoon again, everybody. Um, I'm still sitting here as your president, the president of Ames, uh, two years wearing this chain. I do take it off sometimes, but it is the greatest honour that I've ever been given and one for which I'm so grateful. I feel very proud every time I put the chain on to represent you all. As I said, it's a wonderful job being president, traveling around, representing Ames at various functions, concerts, shows, events all over the country and even in the UK. The welcome I've received everywhere I've been has been so special and the friends and memories I've made along the way will stay with me forever. When January 2020 came, as Frank said earlier, I was ready to hit the road for plenty of shows in my little red Peugeot 308. The year was much different than planned or hoped, but aims kept rising and kept us all connected. In May 2021, a very successful virtual choral festival concert was held and performed by the South East region and friends. Our Virtually Together concert took place in July, which featured outdoor performances from about 30 musical societies from all over the country. And it was something magical to see, as this was the first time in nearly a year and a half that a lot of our members had seen each other in person. We were delighted to be able to present three bursaries and we are so grateful to the O'Neill family for their continued support with their bursary in honour of the late Anne. We are also delighted to continue our relationship with Deirdre Masterson and the American College Dublin for the provision of a bursary for their musical theatre course. And I would ask you to please keep an eye out for further information regarding this year's bursaries in the next few months. As Frank said, the Executive and National Council have carried on working meeting monthly through COVID on your behalf, only it was all virtual. 
and although it wasn't ideal, we did manage to keep going and getting work done. And we are here, as always, for all our societies to help in any way we can. And I want to thank them all so much for their dedication to AIMS. I would like to say a massive thank you again to Maureen Kyohan, who steps down today as our Sullivan Liaison Officer. Thank you, Maureen, for many, many years of tireless dedication to AIMS in your role as Liaison Officer. It's always been a pleasure to deal with you, and I know all our societies feel the same. I would also like to say a massive thank you to Laura Ryan, our Gilbert Liaison Officer, as well for her hard work and for keeping <coughs> the adjudication scheme running. Uh, Maureen will be replaced by Clodagh Farrell from the Western Region, and we wish Clodagh well in her new position on Council. I would also like to welcome Garrett McCreevy onto Council today. Garrett joins us as a new rep for the Northern Region. And we have one change on Executive, with Jerry Sweeney joining as Chairperson of the Midlands Region. And I'd like to say a big thank you to Alton Keena, who was on the Executive as the Midlands Chairperson for the last five years. I would also like to say a big happy birthday to Billy Holmes, who started a new decade last week, although I'm not allowed to say which one. <laughs> the arts sector, as we know, was one of the first to be hit by COVID, and for a long time we felt forgotten about. Following a lot of protestations, communications with politicians, ministers, senators, and the Arts Council, support was finally announced for various sectors of the arts industry. And this time around, AIMS were invited to apply, apply for funding alongside our colleagues in the DLI and the ADCI. And at the same time, as Frank said, AIMS were invited to speak at the Joint Directors Committee on tourism, culture, art, sport and media. And this proved very beneficial. And I'd like to say a big thank you to Senator Malcolm Byrne, who is also a member of Gorey Musical Society, for all his help in this regard. And just before Christmas, our application was approved and funding was provided as part of a pilot scheme from the Arts Council. I have to say a massive thank you from all in AIMS to Vice President Fergal Kavanagh and Secretary Frank Foley, who worked tirelessly on this project and were instrumental in, in this funding, which will enable AIMS to run a mentoring and education scheme for all our societies and through the jewel in our crown, which is our AIMS Summer School. The mentoring scheme will be finalised and rolled out in the next few weeks. And following a very positive meeting again this week with Niall Doyle from the Arts Council, we believe more funding will be made available uh, to help us continue in our endeavours and we'll be working behind the scenes on this uh, shortly again. Our season did start last June with Muse's outdoor production of A Midsummer Night's Dream and a small number of groups followed suit and raised their curtain. Restrictions did ease a bit and we went up to 50% with social distancing and then up to full capacity and then it was back and up and some more predictions were staged, albeit mostly concerts and all seemed to be going in the right way. But between Delta and Omicron, we were back to 50% capacity before Christmas and no performances after 8pm. And as show after show, concerts and pa pantos alike sadly didn't get to make it to stage. But last weekend brought some much needed and welcome great news as restrictions were, were being lifted. The 8pm curfew was removed and the theatres were back to 100%. Life, fun, culture and rehearsals could resume again and how happy we are. Some societies, including my own society, Avonmore, will still stage Sister Act now at Easter and they have commenced rehearsals. And every day more and more show announcements are coming and it is so wonderful to hear. I do understand that some societies will not be able to get back on stage this season, but I hope to see you all back on the stage very soon. The future is looking more positive and a lot brighter. We are on the way back. Our choral festival under administrator Lizzie Heffernan will be back from the 20th to the 22nd of May this year. Our youth summer school will also be back this year, which was just confirmed last night with, with dates being the 3rd to the 7th of July, which is something we're really excited about. We changed insurance companies, uh, as Frank said, this year to Event Insure, and anyone looking for information on the insurance policy can contact our administrator, Billy Holmes, or Fergal Cavanagh, Vice President. Fergal is also the man to contact regard vetting and sponsorship. He's been a very vi busy Vice President, and I'd like to say thank you so much again, Fergal. I would also please ask you to support our AIMS magazine, Showtimes. It's available in hard copy or as an e-magazine, 
And I have to say a massive thank you again to our editor, Brandon Cogley, our distributor, Mary Smith, and our printer, Richard Lavery, for all the help. And uh, hopefully I'll get Brandon to talk to you uh, about showtimes later on. I'd like to say a massive thanks as well to our administrator for the website, Martin McNeilis, for his work, continued work uh, on our website. And a big thank you to our very hardworking PRO, Kate Furlong, who never stops pushing, publishing and promoting all our AIMS events. I'm delighted to say again this year that we are proceeding ahead with our AIMS award scheme and our two adjudicators, Alan Hazlitt and Suzanne O'Leary, are back on the road. I would also ask all societies who would like their show adjudicated to contact our liaison officers as soon as possible. The award scheme normally finishes at the start of May, but this year we are aware some societies are staging shows right up until the June bank holiday weekend, so we are extending the award scheme until Friday the 3rd of June. And if we are having an award scheme, well then we need an awards weekend. So after a gap of two years, I'm delighted to say we'll be back in the Glen Eagle in Killarney from Friday the 17th to Sunday the 19th of June. There will be an increase in the cost this year with the price of the weekend coming in at €380. Euro. Deposits will not be required this year until the end of March to allow societies a bit more time and further details will follow. A massive thank you as always to our Awards Weekend Administrator Fiona Sheeran, who ensures the weekend goes without a hitch and that nobody ends up sleeping in a closet, unless it's by their own choice. <laughs> After today's meeting, I hope to be back on the road, travelling around to as many societies as possible. And if you would like me to visit your society, I would be so happy to do so. I would like to say a massive thank you to all societies for the hospitality and the warm welcome shown to me on my travels. I thoroughly enjoyed all the shows and I congratulate you all. The Standard of Aims show is always so high and I look forward to seeing plenty more talent and fabulous shows as I head on the road again. I was delighted this year in my role as president to be able to visit our sister organisation NODA in the UK and I would like to send every best wish and thanks to NODA President Gordon Richardson and all members of NODA for the warm welcome and hospitality shown to me and Colin Moles who accompanied me over there on our visit last September, and I look forward to welcoming Gordon to Killarney this summer. COVID has been and was such a tough and heartbreaking time for all those, all our societies, and we thank, we know the hard work and dedication that goes into our productions. And I think of them all regularly, all the many committees, production teams, casts, stage crews, sound technicians, lighting technicians, set designers, builders, hair and makeup teams, costume suppliers, props companies, kitchen crews, front of house teams, and our audiences, and the local communities who are so dependent on the wonderful entertainment we provide every year. It's nearly 25 years since I joined, oh, it's over 25 years since I joined my own musical society, Avonmore, and I'm still there with them today, and now your national president of Ames. And I would like to thank all the members of Avonmore again for their friendship and fun that they've provided over the years. And friendship, I believe, is one of the biggest assets in Ames. The friends I've made and we've all made over years have changed our lives. And I look forward to making lots more friends on the years ahead. Being a part of a musical society is so much more than the curtain going down, or the curtain up, the bow at the end of the show. It's about being part of something that we all give so much to, but get so much from. It's about hitting the right notes, getting the dance right, building confidences, making memories and friendships that last much longer than when the curtain goes down. We all missed our wonderful pastime. I know it was challenging with the restrictions, the isolation, not seeing our friends and family, but it was heartwarming to see so many groups, individuals and organisations getting creative in keeping social, keeping distant and keeping us all entertained. So a huge thank you to you all. I just ask you to please keep looking out for one another. It was and is such a tough time for all, and our mental health is really being tested. As I said, I'm so proud to be sitting here as national president again today, and I promise to do my best to represent the association everywhere I go and help grow the love of musical theatre on this wonderful island of ours. So for now, I'd ask you to keep the music in your hearts, and we're sending you lots of love and virtual hugs and I hope to see you all very soon. Thank you very much.
Now, so now if we get back to our our agenda, now item number six are on the the agenda is our election of officers. So I'll hand you over to uh, our national secretary Frank Foley for for this section of the agenda. So the election of officers, then, we have um, a number of, nom no, sorry, one nomination for national <laughs> president for 2022-2023, and that is uh, Rob Donnelly uh, of Avonmore Musical Society, proposed by uh, a number of, of societies uh, during the last two weeks, and they are with myself. Um, any other nominations? So we take this as a given and congratulate uh, our uh, National President Rob Donnelly for the season 2022-2023. Thank you very much, Frank. Uh, I'm delighted to be sitting here with you for, for another, another year and hopefully the year ahead will be a lot busier. We, we'll see a lot more productions going on stage and I look forward to travelling and visiting so many, so many of you. So thank you very much. Now we'll have the, the election of Honorary National Secretary. Okay, the election of National Secretary. One nomination for position of, of National Secretary, and that's yours truly, Frank Foley from Kilmainham Inch Core Musical Society. Any other nominations? I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> so we take uh, that Frank Foley has been nominated as National Secretary for the forthcoming season 2022 uh, to 2023. Congratulations, Frank. Congratulations. Next one is National Treasurer. Uh, treasurer, sorry. <laughs> uh, and we have one nomination, <coughs> and that's Moira no Nolan in her garret in Clontarf. Uh, any other nominations? So we take that nomination and congratulate Moira and wish her all the best at seeing her in person. Uh, for the coming forthcoming season 2022-2023. Uh, on to item number nine, the election of honorary national vice president. And again, we've won nomination. That's outgoing vice president Fergal Kavanagh from Nine Arch Muse Society in the Western Region. We any other nominations? So we deem Fergal Kavanagh elected as National Vice President for the forthcoming season, 2022-2023. Okay. Congratulations, Fergal. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. And the last of our elections then uh, for Honorary National PRO for the forthcoming season, 2022-2023. And we have one nomination again. That's outgoing National PRO, Kate Furlong from Cool Mine Musical Society. Any other nominations? And we deem Kate uh, re-elected with her positive vibes for the forthcoming season 2022-2023. And all those nominations are with the National Secretary and can be seen uh, just in case there's a question around, around that. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Frank, and congratulations again to our executive, executive officers. I said it's been my privilege and pleasure to serve with, with, the, with Frank and Fergal and uh, uh, Kate for the last uh, two years and I look forward to serving with them again for, for the year ahead. Um, the next item on our agenda is item number 11 is the, the reappointment of auditors. So um, Rob, over to Rob Myra. yeah, um, I'd like to uh, us to reappoint McFeely and McKiernan, McKiernan for another for year. Another year. Yes. That's Feely and McKiernan, mm -hmm. nominated by National Treasurer Moira Nolan and can I get a seconder for that? I'll second that. Fergal. Yeah, Fergal Kavanagh. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okie dokie. Okay. That's great. Thank you, Myra and Fergal. Uh, item number 12 uh, on the agenda is the 2023 AGM. So have we any proposals for the, the AGM for 2023 from the floor or... Now, just during the year, uh, if I could cut yeah. in there, oh, we, can, Frank. Yeah. we uh, did um, have uh, booked um, 
Bluefield House Hotel in Mullingar for our working weekend and for this AGM. But unfortunately, during the, uh, due to the COVID and the whole lot, uh, we, we decided we had to cancel. So we cancelled bedrooms and meals and uh, also the rooms for the AGM as well. So I'm just wondering and putting it out there uh, just to kind of to give them some business that the um, AGM for 2023 would be held in the Bluefield House Hotel, Mullingar. But we're, be like, we're open to any other um, offers, always oh. open to offers. Okay, so that's the proposal from Frank that we, we, we keep there. I would, I would accept that. I, I, yeah, sorry, Brian. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I, I, would, I would propose, propose accept that. Accept that. Yes, yes, don't, 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 don't. Sorry, I think, I think um, we should, um, should look at, look at prices, prices as well, as well before, before we... Because uh, prices, prices, prices of a lot of hotels are not very expensive. expensive. Yeah, that's, that's okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's Arthur. Arthur. Is it Arthur? Arthur? Yeah, I, I heard the voice. I can't see Arthur, but I recognise the voice. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, I would yeah, second, second Arthur's Arthur point there about, there about you know, checking, you know, checking for, for, for a good value, value deal, deal before it's, it's confirmed. confirmed and we leave that up to the good auspices of the executive. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, so is that um, so is that a okay with the is the body of the meeting in favour of that? If we, if so, we're going with, with the the, the Midlands provisional region, and we will check prices and that out. Is, if that's okay, if we can get a. You know, yeah. do, we, do we get a show of hands or do we? Yeah, if people give us a wave. Yeah. yeah so that's all. All looks uh, pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so thanks very much for that. Thanks, Frank. Okay, we're open to uh, any other business permitted by, by the rules. So I suppose um, just to, um, a, couple of, a couple of points that I mentioned earlier on in, in my report and Frank mentioned as well uh, about, about show times. I'm just wondering, do we have, do we have Brandon on, online there? I'm here. Yep, yeah, Brandon. Yep, yeah, we'll just get, we'll get the... Uh, We'll get to you, Brandon. Yeah, no problem. Um, just a quick update on showtimes. So um, past year, I, I know Frank and Rob have been talking about how there haven't been as many shows and events and so on. Um, but hopefully going forward now, there's going to be a whole lot, a whole lot more shows and concerts and fundraisers and so on. Um, so the showtimes will be a lot busier and a lot more jam-packed this year. Uh, we actually shortened down on the amount of uh, issues that went did last year just for that reason. Um, so we decided to spread it out across a few months. Um, but just as well as Frank said in his speech, um, the physical copies and the digital copies are kind of gradually increasing, especially the online. Um, the, the showtimes is full of information, like you have public crits, there shows, national, regional, local um, news all around the country, and much, much more. Um, you can subscribe online on the website aims.ie, um, and you can either subscribe online or else you can pay via check. All the details for that will be online. Um, if you have any information or any events or news or anything about your society, whether that be locally, regionally or so on, can I advise that you send in an email to showtimes at aim.ie or perhaps get in touch with your regional PRO um, because any um, events, pictures, images, anything would be greatly, greatly appreciated. It's a, a big hive of information, Showtimes. It's great for the archives going forward. So anything you have uh, would be greatly appreciated if you could send that in over the next year. And thanks to everyone that has done so far in the past year. Thanks, Brandon. Do you want to let them know about the next issue coming out and your dates and with yeah. your deadlines and stuff like that? If you yeah, if absolutely. You would, please. Uh, so we're hoping that the first Showtimes uh, edition of 2022 will be going out in March. Um, we're hoping for it to go out the, the Monday the 14th of March. So we're going to put a deadline for Friday the 25th of February. If anyone wants to make note of that, um, again, whether that's, it can be anything like fundraisers, AGM notices, previous shows that have gone up, anything like that. So that's Friday, the 25th of February for our deadline. And then hopefully you'll have it in your hands or on your, on your tablets or iPads then by Monday, the 14th of March. Okay. That's great. Thanks. Thanks, Brandon. Thank you. So, um, again, it's just, um, Showtimes, it is the organization's magazine. We, we know the last two years have been fairly, been fairly quiet. So we would just ask, as Brandon said, please let us know what your society has been getting up to. Send, send articles in, photos in of your productions, uh, etc. Et and, um, 
and just help us to get the, the subscriptions ba back up and the quality of the magazine back up. Um, the, I also mentioned earlier about um, the Choral Festival, which is coming back in May again this year. So if, if Lizzie Heffernan is there online, we'll, we'll ask Lizzie to, to fill you in on the Choral Festival. Yeah, the lads are just going to find Lizzie now. All I can see is little little squares oh, on, the, on the screen. <laughs> oh, is Lizzie? Oh, is she there? Oh, Lizzie, yeah, I can hear you. Oh, there you are. Yeah. 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 So you just, just hold on, Lizzie. Lizzie, just hold on one second till they find you. And then they'll get you on the screen. Sorry, Lizzie. Give us one second. Yeah. You nearly there. Yeah, you can go ahead, Lizzie. Yeah, so the Cora Festival is taking place Friday, May 20th to Sunday, May 22nd. Um, I would like to encourage all or as many musical societies to consider competition C on the Sunday, which is confined to AIMS members, um, and also the cameo competition, which is another great one for the musical societies. Um, we're really looking forward to getting back um, and I've had a lot of good feedback and a lot of people coming to me, um, you know, inquiring about it over the last week. So fingers crossed, all going well. We'll be back with a bang in May. Yeah. That's, that's great, Lizzie. Great. Th th thanks very much. And we're so, so appreciative of the work that Lizzie and the, the, the committee in Euros do on the Coral Festival. It is another one of our... Uh, one of our jewels uh, in Ames, and it's one that we're so looking forward to uh, getting getting back on stream this year. Uh, obviously, normally um, with the Choral Festival, we normally would have the announcement of the awards, the, the award nominations uh, in New Ross, but obviously this year, as we've pushed out the nominations to the, the 3rd of June, we, we, will have the, we will have the nominations for the awards this year on the 7th or 8th of June, that's when, when the nominations will be gone out. But we will give you more details on that closer to the time. Uh, now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand over to Fergal. If you want to say a few words, Fergal, and uh, we'll let, let people see that you, that you are here with us uh, in person. And uh, Fergal is, again, our Vice President for the year ahead. And as I said earlier, a massive thanks to Fergal for all the, the work that he does on the on the sponsorship front, the Garda vetting front, the uh, the grant funding front, um, uh, and the insurance uh, scheme as well. So, Fergal, do you want to maybe give the lads a bit of a, an insight what what you've been at over the last year? Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Thanks, thanks yeah. Rob. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, I, I put you on the spot, Fergal. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I suppose the first thing I should mention really is in relation to. Uh, the work that we've done with the, the grants, because that has been the main area that we have concentrated on. Uh, trying to find commercial sponsors has been continuing to be a, a major issue. We have tried several uh, national companies, but we still have not had any access on it. So our, we have been putting our efforts into uh, what government and grant systems would be available. Uh, what was started uh, November of, not last year, the year before that, with the Arts Council came to fruition, uh, which was really good. Uh, and the funding of 125,000 has been approved for the pilot scheme. Uh, and the first tranche of that has actually been sent to us at this stage. Uh, this will have be rolled out, as Rob was saying, over the course of the next few months, uh, right through to the end of the, the shows for this season and will, will extend into the shows for next season as well. It is only a pilot scheme uh, and therefore it's when it's finished, it's finished. Uh, and this is why uh, the Arts Council have come along to us with that meeting last week that we attended with them, uh, that they have said that they are 
looking at see what way they can continue funding because there's no point in giving us funding one year and not having it coming in next year, otherwise you stop whatever you've started. Uh, so we would hope, and they did infer, that they w it was of interest for them to put us in a situation where there would be continual funding, uh, provided we do everything that they want, because it's very much, uh, they have guidelines there in how your money can be spent, that it has to go for the professionalization of our organization and to enhance and improve uh, musical theater throughout the country. Uh, this did bring up the situation then in relation to the Arts Council in Northern Ireland and we have approached them as well to see uh, that if we're running this scheme that to ensure that it would, could be compatible and that all societies in the north would benefit of it as well uh, could we look for funding from them. We've had an initial positive response from there as well so I would hope that, uh, that we will through the course of this year be able to put funding uh, from, the, uh, from the Northern Ireland Arts Council as well. Uh, the schemes that the Arts Council is now talking about are two schemes. One is a general funding scheme for arts groups, uh, and also then there is uh, a second one for a development, if they had a, a capac capacity building. So it's under two fronts that we're looking to see if we can get funding there. But it has been pretty positive with them, and I would be hopeful that that will fall into place you know, after the pilot scheme has been completed. Uh, so that's the situation there on, on, the, the, on the grants from the funding. Uh, the insurance is fairly straightforward. We did have a, uh, had March with the previous insurers. We were having a lot of difficulty with them, mainly on communications, uh, that you try to contact them and you weren't getting any answers or you emailed them and there's still no answers and nobody came back to you or whatever. So this was going on for several months. Now, it didn't affect very many people because a lot of people weren't active, but it was very noticeable from where we were sitting that, the, uh, that we were not getting the service that we deserved. Uh, so we went and we found Brady Insurance. We did a lot of work with them, and they have put a policy together. Uh, and they have a, it looks like an excellent service for uh, all our member societies in that uh, if you want a standard policy, you can actually go online fill in your details and everything will happen automatically. Uh, if you want to go outside the specific policy which we've tailor made uh, along with them to suit the vast majority of societies, but if you need something extra, they have a contact name there, you can go in there, contact them and they will tailor make, as they've already done for one of our societies, uh, a policy to suit your specific needs. We found that their, the standard policy costs 466 euros um, but if you want additional stuff, obviously it would cost more. Uh, and also they have just confirmed in the last couple of weeks to me that they will also be able to cover societies in Northern Ireland. Uh, so what's that, about 400 sterling that it would be for the cover for them. So again, the, if that's competitive with what the societies can get in the North, it is available to them. Um, finally, on... Uh, Guard of Vetting, uh, that has worked very well over the last number of years. Uh, I'm delighted to say that in conjunction with CREATE, who we deal with on this, they are uh, improving their system. And we'd hope where it is sort of about 60% uh, online, whereas all you had to do was fill in your initial application uh, and send that in, make sure that was correct, uh, and get it submitted. It then went online and it became uh, automatic from them to the cert being actually issued. Uh, they intend bringing in a system where in fact we'll, you will get a password and you will fill in the initial form online. Now that's been rolled out as a pilot as well with us as we would be their main client. Uh, and I would hope that that would be in, in the next two to three months. So it will mean that will make this system even quicker and more efficient than it currently is. Uh, so that hopefully will be rolled out very shortly. Uh, and having been caught off guard, I think that's about everything, Rob. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thanks very much, uh, Fergal, for, for that. Right. Yeah. Does anyone have any, um, just if I go back to the, the floor, just in case anyone has any queries, does anyone have any questions for Fergal regarding the insurance or guard of vetting? Or is everybody, is everyone okay on? 
just one footnote actually on the insurance. If anybody has any queries on that there, it is up on the on the AMS website. You just go in there and any details uh, that you want are there and then all the contacts as well. So it's readily available. <coughs> uh, but you can't contact obviously Billy or myself. Okay. Thanks, Thanks Virgo. Okay, I suppose the, the other well just, just two things I'm going to mention and then I will I'll throw the meeting open to the open to the floor then. But just as I as I said earlier, the, um, the AIM summer school, um, we are delighted to say as I, we had our meetings yesterday and we, we were hoping to say that we would be confirming it in the next few weeks, but we're able to confirm that we are going back to the, the Ursuline convent in Turles for our AIMS youth summer school from the third to the eighth of July again this year. So if you have any uh, young members in your societies that who, who would like to go to the um, to the Ursuline for this week long course, which is a it's a fantastic opportunity for uh, for our members, uh, the work that they do there during the week. The, I have to say a massive thanks to all our all our aims, uh, people behind the scenes for, to, who look after these young, young members down there, to Peter Kennedy, to Shane Farrell, um, the, the work that's done in Torless, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. And what they do in a, accomplishing a week is so, something um, astounding. And as we all know, some of our past members have gone on to, to bigger and brighter and better things. So it is a it's, is the jewel in our crown. So if you have any young members, please let them know about the summer school, uh, the, the 3rd to the 8th of July. And then obviously, I suppose, the, the, big, the big thing for a lot of our members is uh, when do we get to meet together again? And obviously, as we said, we will be having our awards weekend in Killarney. Normally, if we, had, if we were in the room here, I would hand over to Fiona Sheeran, but she's otherwise engaged the far side of the table from me here that you can't see. So just to give you a few more details on the, on the awards, um, the weekend it will be on the 17th again to the 19th of June. We are back in the Glen Eagle in Killarney. Um, the Friday night, we will have um, our fancy dress um, a party as normal and the theme this year for um for the friday night is being alive a celebration of stephen sondheim which is uh, obviously perfectly apt and appropriate in uh, in memory of uh, the, the late and great stephen sondheim so so great um great choice and great great ideas i'm sure lots of people will have their their thinking caps on on that um as well, unfortunately, with the with everything with COVID and the whole lot, there is, there is a price increase, and the, the price increase for the weekend this year will, will be three hundred and eighty euro. Um, so that that's the the cost mm. for that. Um, as I said, the weekend normally we have our deposits due to be paid for St Patrick's weekend, but obviously again this year everything is societies are getting back to normal slowly but surely, and. Um, where we will be announcing dates, but we're talking the end of March for deposits to be paid. So uh, uh, forms, applications, stuff like that will all be available in the in the very near future. Um, the the band I yeah the band for the Saturday night is Catch Twenty Two as uh, normal. We're delighted to have um, Fergal Darcy again uh, emceeing and presenting for us, and. I think the rest of the weekend, as anyone who has been down there before, will will run like clockwork as it always is, or as mad and chaotic as it always always has been. And uh, we look forward to seeing uh, so many of you down there. It's been it's been a long time. Uh, I know a long time. It's two years, but it seems like forever since we've all seen each other. So uh, we look we look forward to that. So uh, I think that's all I have to say on on Ames behalf. Uh, and now we can open the, the meeting to the floor if anyone has any questions, queries, or anything like that for us. Just, um, as I said, if you ra raise your hand, uh, Fiona will signal you and uh, we, we can bring you in. Oh. Mikey? Yeah, oh, here we go. Yeah. yeah, we're just getting to you now, Mikey. Yeah, there you are. Hi there, good afternoon, everyone. I'd just like to thank uh, Ames, I suppose, for all the work in keeping us um, uh, going during the lockdown. In particular, I suppose Kim's would like to thank people that were involved in the Virtually Together because as, as an, or, an organization in Kim's, we really, really enjoy that, um, getting us together for that amount of time. Um, the one query 
I, I, I suppose I have or, or something I just wanted to raise and throw it out there as an idea. I suppose 2022 is the year of centenaries with all the different things happening kind of, you know, in, nationally uh, in, in Ireland. And I'm wondering, ha, has AIMS thought about or have regions thought about doing something that might celebrate that in terms of, uh, in terms of musicals and in terms of uh, music? Okay, well, it's the day. It's not um, it's not something that we have we had to discussed ourselves, I suppose, uh, at the at the top table. But I don't know whether individual societies around the country is there, is there anyone on the call who has has anything being planned in that in that regard? Is there a No, no, sorry, no. sorry Mike, there's not, there's nothing coming forward. Uh, can, I, can I just say in relation yeah. Oh, yeah, to that? Yeah, um, yeah. Mo, Mo, yeah. Go ahead, Mo. Um, I know it's a lovely idea, but maybe just because our celebrating things may eliminate some of our northern um, societies, that we have to be very careful about doing things like that. That okay. we have to be uh, aware of uh, sensitivities in, in that area. Okay. Can I just yeah, yeah. get that, Robin? Just yeah, say, go, yeah. yeah, go ahead, Mike. Um, yeah. Like, yeah. If, 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 if anything for me, and I'm sure for lots of people in Ireland, um, AIMS is the complete antithesis of what uh, Mo was saying. You know, I, I understand the sensitivities, but like we are really inclusive. So I, I, I was thinking of something more, you know, along the lines. And I accept what, what Mo was saying, and it might be a very sensitive topic. And we've seen some political figures in Ireland maybe get themselves in hot water over different reactions to different events. But I thought as an organization that is extremely inclusive and uh, works, you know, across the 36 counties and politics doesn't really, I suppose, come into our agenda that maybe it might it might it might be worth looking at and exploring but it's just an idea yeah no yeah, absolutely yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. well uh, i said i'll put that uh, straight onto our agenda for our next our next <coughs> meeting that we'll be having in the next couple of weeks mikey yeah and we will definitely will we will look yeah. into that yeah thanks adam, adam yeah adam uh, from newbridge uh, give us one second we'll pull you up there adam no problem guys yeah good to see you again Great, yeah. great to be back yeah. and, and congrats yeah. guys on a really well run a virtual AGM. I love the idea of, of doing it broadcast as well so people could tune in. Um, I guess I'm going to sound a bit like a broken record from people who would have heard the minutes from last year. Just wanted to again raise the point that, you know, through great management, Ames is sitting on 110 grand of cash. Mm. And, you know, I, I think with reopening and, and with societies not having had a chance maybe to do proper fundraising the last couple of years, and now having the chance, you know, over the next year to 18 months of being able to do musicals, I wonder if maybe there could be uh, a, a discussion within the national executive of, of how to best use that money to, you know, support musical societies around the country. Um, and, you know, I guess as part of that, another question I would have is just on, you know, the, the transparency around any uses of money that are given to societies. Um, just I would have noted from the secretary's report, that there was grant funding given to Southeastern, which, you know, for a fantastic cause, that diversity workshop, I think, is is super, and I look forward to them around the country. But maybe if there could be something in the Treasurer's report or, or even a quarterly thing which just says that X amount was given to such a society and it was sourced from the Arts Council or was sourced from AIM's own funds, um, just so that everyone's kind of on a level playing field in terms of knowing how money was given and why it was given. Okay, yeah. Well, just on the, well, I suppose just on to take it in in two parts. Well, the 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 funding that we received from the Arts Council wasn't just like um, there you are, aims uh, uh, away you go. We had to we had to put a budget together and a scheme together for um, it wasn't just like um, a bl blanket funding. So we had to put a scheme together, which is for a mentoring program and an education program through our, our uh, youth summer school. So the, the way that the, the mentoring program obviously will be is been finalised and rolled out because it was we put a budget together for a plan for all our societies being back in action this season, but we will have that in nailed down and rolled out in the next few weeks. And obviously with the arts council, every penny that we spend has to be fully transparent and fully fully receipted and, and covered for. So we, we will be making sure of that, and we will be trying to do it to as best I suppose. Um, support our societies as best we can and likewise with the with the summer school the the workshop in the the southeast was i suppose um 
I suppose I can bring Frank in as well on this. It's like a pilot, uh, not a pilot scheme. It was to help with the cultural diversity and social inclusion. And what, what they're doing, obviously, some people who, who are aware or not aware, is a, a fully integrated um, hairspray production. Hairspray was one of the, the shows that was sort of pulled. Um, well, some versus sides were prevented from doing that uh, a couple of years ago. So the Southeastern Theatre Group uh, came up with the idea of doing a fully integrated hairspray in Waterford and Ames decided that this is a, a project that we would like to support and workshops that we would like to, to run around the country. So in October, I did travel to Waterford to attend the workshop, which was run by um, David Hayes, musical director, David Hennessy, director, and Michelle Condon, who is the choreographer for the Southeastern with the, the aim, well, the, the workshop was ran with members of the black community on the day that I attended, and they cast uh, the show of Hairspray to go ahead on in March, but obviously due to COVID and with the way restrictions were at the time, uh, I believe that that show has been pushed off now till October. But the plan obviously is for us to have more of those workshops ar around the country, and it is just a, a project that we that Ames is proud to support. So that that is that is on that regard. I don't know if there's anything else on that you want to say, Frank. These things um, these things take legs. Yeah. So I just want to categorically say that there was no money given to Southeastern uh, Theatre Group for the provision of that workshop. Um, so I just want to categorically say, uh, state that um, it certainly with regards to the diversity and inclusion, uh, it's certainly a model that could be rolled out in other regions mm. and will be looked at as well. And certainly there would be expenses with regards to the people that are doing that. But I want to categorically say that there was no money given uh, for that workshop to South Eastern Theatre Group. OK, thanks, Frank. And just with regards to the transparency as well, there is a breakdown, there normally is a breakdown for National Council with regards to the grants, uh, the grants and any funding and sponsorship that we get, um, whether it's from For All Cairn, which I think are gone, or from the Department of Education, which I got personally myself. There is a breakdown of the list with regards to the transparency for the National um, Council. And where, the way we spend that or use that then, uh, certainly there would be transparency that that would be given to National Council and would be available to members and that at their regional meetings as well. Okay, thanks. Is that okay, Adam? Yeah, I think that makes sense. I mean, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, is, is more that I think... I think it would be useful for for there to be an easy to access report where where where, where like where member sites could see maybe a, a breakdown of of Ames's money in and out by activity and and I, I think maybe uh, you know with the good cash that is there it would be good to share that around um, to think of you know whether through loans or something else to music societies around the country to be able to get back on their feet. Um, but, yeah, no, but I, I appreciate that's something that takes a very long time. It's not something to be yeah. solved now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and obviously everything. Well, Fergal, do you want to do you want to even talk about the like the process you had to go through for the the Arts Council funding that we budgeting wise and stuff like that? You yeah, know. The, the, the Arts Council laid on as any organisation, I suppose, but particularly in the Arts Council, they laid on very strict parameters of how and where you can use uh, the funding that they give you. And that has got to be agreed with them, um, you know, before they will approve it, or or you won't get approval unless it falls in within within those categories. Uh, so there's quite a bit of discussion with them uh, to get uh, the program, the pilot programs, in a format that would uh, comply with what they required. So they are. It has to be educational. It has to bring in professionalism. It has to. There are other parameters as well that they laid down. Uh, and so there was quite a bit of work done on that there to create the programmes. I know that there's just a pilot programme and we'll hopefully we'll be able to be followed on at once, but they will have to approve what we're doing. Uh, but that's the sort of controls that they will put on. And good governance is a major factor uh, for any organisation uh, getting funds uh, from the Arts Council that we've got to it's got to be uh, absolutely transparent and totally clear uh, of what's going on and how the money is used um, and all the requirements that they need for that there. Okay, okay. Th thanks, Virgil. 
Okay, so th thanks, Adam. Hope that's okay. And I suppose just when I when I did ha have you there, just to say again, uh, congratulations to yourself and Keen and Daniel on the, your odd uh, theatre uh, podcast and uh, continued success with that. And it's um, yeah, it's a it's a great job, lads. So well well done again to yourselves. Thanks, Rob. Yeah. Have we anyone else on there? Uh, David, David Hennessy, and Donna Waterford. I can't see it, there, but they'll, uh, I, yeah, they're just. Hi, Rob. How are you, David? Yeah. Great. Um, I just want to say congratulations to everyone in Ames. Again, delighted to see the same people back on board. Uh, amazing for you, Rob. You've been an, a huge asset to Ames. And um, as a friend, I'm delighted to see you back on board again and look forward to welcoming you back to shows. Thanks very much, David. And um, just on the hairspray thing, um, I just want to clarify that because some people seem to think we got funded. Um, yes, Ames came on board with us to support it. This was the most vital workshop and most important workshop I've ever been involved in, in diversity and inclusion. And Rob, Rob attended that day, which we were delighted to have him. It meant so much to members of the black community. This is something I've been working on for a long, long time. Hairspray or not, this was something that I wanted to bring into the musical theatre scene over and over and further afield if possible in Ireland, especially on an amateur level. So funding, we were asked to submit an invoice, um, but after speaking with the committee and with David Hayes and Michelle Condon, we just felt that the support of the veins was more important to us than any funding at that stage or any contribution towards that workshop. So that's why there was no invoice submitted. And we just want to thank Games for their support and helping us uh, promote that weekend and we were lucky enough to have casted Hairspray. Unfortunately, it has been put off till October because we couldn't get into rehearsals in January when we weren't sure of the restrictions. But I just wanted for everyone that's on the floor here today to go. Um, it wasn't about we didn't receive any funding and we don't want any funding. So thank you to Ames for supporting that weekend. It meant a lot. No problem, David. And uh, I look forward to seeing, well, obviously, I always love the visits to Waterford, but I look forward to seeing that production take, take stage because it was such a special project and uh, the, the good vibes that was in the room that day was, was really something special. So it's a, it's a very special project and one we are uh, delighted to support. So thanks very much. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Mo McMahon. Yeah, if you hang on, Mo, we'll just bring you up on the screen. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Mo. We have you now. Uh, good afternoon, all, and again, congratulations to everybody for a, a well-run AGM. Um, always a delight to see everybody back, all the officers back, and, and thank you all for your work over this difficult period. Um, just one thing I want to say, uh, just information, really, that... Um, the Irish Institute of Music and Song, which is based in Balbriggan in North County, Dublin, they have been given funding for a new concert hall called the Lark Concert Hall. It's 400 seater concert hall. And I, they, I think the um, Taoiseach turned a sod on that recently. So they're hoping to have it open in March uh, 2023. So it's a, a, a new venue opening up in, in North County, Dublin in the next while. And I think they're looking for about the 160 jobs we provided in it for, for that in if in, in going forward that's great yes it's, a, it's another exci exciting project and it's it's great it's to see yeah, yeah i did, did just see it on the news as well yeah it's, mm, it's, a, yeah. it's a, another exciting project and it's great to see another another theater being being provided mm -hmm. especially in, in that part of dublin as well like you know thanks for that mo okay we, anybody else that wants to come in No, I think that's it. Frank, are we, are you, anything else? Or is there anything else we forgot? Or no, no, no that's yeah. that's it. Okay, well, uh, yeah. Th thank you very much for for attending. Um, be it on Zoom or be it on on YouTube, um, your your attendance and appreciation uh, support is much appreciated by by us all here in Ames. I said, unfortunately, we weren't all able to be here uh, in person. But hopefully, now going forward, uh, we will be able to get back to back to normality. Um, on behalf of myself, I hope to be, well, I will be back on the road. And I said, if any of your societies are putting on shows or productions and would like me to attend, I be, would be more than delighted to do so. Just uh, drop me a line and, and let me know. 
But apart from that, just to say, listen, lads, we're on the way back. Um, please uh, look after each other. Look after your society members. Uh, I hope you all get your, get back on stage very, very soon. Um, as you've seen at the start of the meeting, we had the, the show posters up for all the productions that are, are coming up. So I wish everybody uh, every success. But I said, please, please keep safe, stay well, and uh, hopefully we'll see you all back back on stage very soon. And I think that's all. I think we can bring the meeting to a close. But I just ask the national councillors to please stay on the on the Zoom line. We just have to have a quick meeting after after today. But um, yeah, thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in and. Uh, Enjoy the rest of your Sunday.